everybody, my name is Carlton Hudson. I go by the name of Network Prodigy. I am a senior network engineer with over eight years of experience working as a computer network engineer. What I do is I create different tutorials covering different Cisco topics, and these tutorials are designed to help you become a better, more sound network engineer. Over the next couple of days, I'm going to be releasing new tutorials covering EIGRP concepts. And in our first tutorial, we're gonna take a look at the difference between advertised distance and feasible distance. So in EIGRP, advertised distance, this is the metric that your peer has calculated and they're reporting to you as their metric to get to the destination. Feasible distance is what metric you have calculated to get to the destination if you were to route through that peer. So let me give you an example and then we'll go to the CLI and see a real example. So router one has a loopback interface that he is advertising into EIGRP over to router three. Now, even though this is router one's loopback, since he is injecting it into EIGRP, he has to calculate an EIGRP metric. Let's just say he calculated 100. That's his EIGRP metric. When he advertises his loopback down to three, he's going to report that his metric is 100. So when three gets it, he's gonna see that he's learning about router one's loopback from router one, and router one's metric is 100. So on router three, the advertised distance for that particular path is 100. Now three has to decide if he were to route this way and route through router one in order to get to one's loop back, what is his metric? Let's just say he calculates it to be 300. If that's the case, then the feasible distance becomes 300. So the advertised distance, this is what the peer is advertising to you as their metric. The feasible distance, this is your metric if you are to route through the peer. So now let's head on over to router three. Let's look at this live from the CLI. So let's type show IP EIGRP topology. If you type this command, this is going to show you every route that you're learning in EIGRP. Okay, this is basically the EIGRP database. If you want to look at details for a specific route, you can do show IP EIGRP topology, and then you put the prefix that you want to look at. So when you do this, you're gonna see every single path that you're learning in EIGRP to this destination, and then all of the different values for that particular destination. So who are you learning it from? What interface did you learn it from? And then you'll see things like the minimal bandwidth, the total delay, the reliability, all the different values for the K values that make up the composite metric in EIGRP, which we all know that by default is only gonna use bandwidth and delay. And then whether or not it's internal or external. So if it's external, that means this route was redistributed into EIGRP. But based on this output, we see that we're learning about router one's loopback from two different routers. We're learning it from router two and we're learning it from router one. Okay, the two numbers that I want you to focus on are gonna be the numbers right here in parentheses. Okay, this first number, this is gonna be the advertised distance. So router three is learning about router one's loopback from router two, and this is the distance or the metric that two is advertising or reporting to three. That means that this is router two's metric in order to get to one's loop back. We can verify that if we come over to router two and we do a show IP route for router one's loop back, you're gonna notice that we're learning it. I didn't mean to do that. We're learning it from router one. We're learning it from EIGRP, but notice the metric is 130,816. If we come back over to router three, notice that the advertised distance is 130,816. So this is what two is reporting to three as his metric to get to this destination right here, which is one's loop back. This number right here is the feasible distance. This is the metric that three has calculated to get to router one's loop back if he were to route through router two. So how did router three come up with this? Well, let's go back to our board right here. This is the EIGRP composite metric calculation right here. 
by default it only uses bandwidth and delay so you figure out what the bandwidth is you figure out what the delay is you add them together you multiply by 256 and that is your metric so the bandwidth this is going to be this number right here this number right here so all you do is you take 10 to the 7th and you divide it by that number so if you have a calculator you want to make sure it's in scientific mode so most of the time it is start in standard mode like this you want to click here and go to scientific mode you say 10 to the 7th that gives you 10 million you divide it by the minimal bandwidth which we saw was 1 million right it's this number right here and then you get 10 so that means the bandwidth is going to be 10 in this calculation you then have to figure out what the delay is so you're going to take the delay and divide it by 10 the delay is going to be the total delay which is going to be this number right here 5020 so you take 5020 and you divide it by 10 so the delay in this case is going to be 502 you're then going to take 502 and add it to 10 you get 512 you then take 512 multiply by 256 that's how you get 131,072 so that means that router 3 has calculated that if he were to route through router 2 in order to get to this destination right here this is going to be his metric 131,072 so that's your feasible distance this is your advertised distance okay you're going to see you have the same exact numbers for routing through router one okay you have an advertised distance of 128,256 this is what router one okay this is the peer this is what he's reporting to three and then three has calculated a metric of 156,160 as his metric if he were to route through one Okay, again, if you want to do that calculation, all you do is figure out what your bandwidth is, what your delay is, add them together, and multiply by 256. So your bandwidth in this example is going to be 100,000. So that right there. So all you do is you get your calculator. Again, you want to make sure it's in scientific mode. You take 100,000 or you take 10. 10 to the 7 which is 10 million divided by 100,000 and you get 100 so in this example 100 becomes your bandwidth you then figure out what your delay is by taking the delay which is 5100 and dividing it by 10 so 5100 divided by 10 is 510 you're going to add this to 100 which is the bandwidth that gives you 610 multiply by 256 and that's how you get 156,160 right so the advertised distance and the feasible distance really simple to understand just remember when you're looking at it from the router this number right here is the advertised distance or the reported distance this is what the peer is reporting to you as their metric to get to this destination right here and then this number here is the feasible distance this is what you have calculated as your metric to get to that destination if you were to route through this pier